Wednesday, August 12th, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So yes, we've had the pullback in gold. It's been very sharp, vicious, very quick, I think, as well, which means the rebound will be even quicker and sharper. I've spoken recently about uh, how markets, uh, when they break out through very important levels, or if they break below very important levels as well, uh, and they accelerate higher or lower, eventually they uh, re rebound or they pull back to, to retest those breakout levels. And that in, in of itself is actually a very positive technical sign. Yes, I know a lot of you are saying or thinking that this has been manipulation uh, by the central banks, by the bullion banks, and probably so, but uh, all it does is uh, increase the speed of the uh, rebound, and it also means we won't have to wait as long for the pullback because it's happened in 24 hours. I recently said I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, came back to retest the 1920 level or even below 1900. Uh, if you remember uh, well, in the, uh, in the last few weeks, uh, I was talking about, I think it was back in July, that if we closed above 1825, it would be the highest monthly close ever for gold. And I also said that we could retest that level. So, um, unfortunately, I, I think this uh, price action in the last 24 hours is going to throw a lot of people off the bull the bull market in gold uh, the old saying is that uh, it's called the bull market because it, it gets really really uh, how can I say vicious <laughs> the bull gets really vicious you have to hold on to that bull or else you fall off the bull that's why it's called the bull market but um, yeah uh, I wasn't uh, really worried yesterday nor today as we've seen gold go down even further. We've had a low of 1861. I was expecting this. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be so quick in terms of um, the move uh, in less than a day, but uh, it has been. And all it means is that once we rebound back above 1920, uh, the move higher will be even quicker. And uh, so we've done the technical work. Uh, before I go further, just wanted to show you a couple of charts. One is the uh, logarithmic. That's why I've been telling you to look at these logarithmic charts, because if you look at them, especially in the quarterly uh, logarithmic chart of the price of gold going back to the early 70s, you can see that the move we've had in the last 24 hours, you can't even see it. It's not even detectable. Uh, very in the in the long term and also in the monthly as well and the other thing that we need to take into perspective is that we started the year uh, in gold just above 1500 and we're still right now at 1893 what else is there to say well on a fundamental basis nothing has changed did the Federal Reserve Bank of England and ECB jointly raise interest rates yesterday did they uh, come out and say they're going to stop uh, printing money or doing asset purchases or QE, whatever you want to call it? Did uh, the governments come out yesterday and say that they're stopping all the stimulus, that uh, they're going to increase taxes and pay off that? Uh, did the central banks come out and, and say that they're going to stop all the programs to private businesses? No, <laughs> nothing has changed. It, uh, as far as the fundamentals are concerned, the only thing we saw was a technical move. Uh, the supply and demand of gold didn't change yesterday either. So yeah, that uh, gold coin is still there. Uh, I bet you if you go uh, today and try to uh, get some physical gold, uh, it's going to be tough. The premiums are going to be still high and also silver. 
there probably won't be that much silver around. So, uh, yeah, the, the people who were expecting the pullback, uh, they were more the traders, I would say. Yeah, they'll be able to get back in into their ETFs, uh, SLV, GLD, but that's not real uh, gold. If you really want to protect yourself uh, outside the system, you have to have the physical. And, and I don't think uh, the market there has changed that much. The other thing as well for me, uh, and I know how people probably were feeling yesterday or even this morning, uh, it's not a nice feeling in your gut. <laughs> but I've been through this since 2002, so I'm kind of immune. And you need to think of as well, most importantly, actually, I almost forgot, uh, is what is the alternative? If you've got uh, your uh, silver and gold, your stack, what is the alternative if you uh, convert that back into fiat? Do you really want to put your hard-earned savings with one of these banks that are probably um, <laughs> in trouble? As I, I talked about the other day, the, the too big to fail banks, they're having to put hundreds, well, almost $200 billion in provisions because they expect losses. Uh, we've got all the schemes uh, running out uh, here in the UK, uh, in the US, we've got elections now as well, all the uncertainty. Do you really want to have uh, your hard-earned savings with these banks? And we know from uh, looking into the system as well, and I've spoken to you about the system, how these banks are basically casinos and they help finance as well. Uh, the governments, and we know what governments have been doing. Uh, they haven't really been that honest with us. So, yeah, the alternative, yeah, get out of your precious metals uh, and um, finance the governments, finance the bankers, and be uh, be in danger of losing all of that uh, savings. Uh, and uh, I need to explain to people, uh, I do look at other investments. Uh, I'm not saying people should only invest uh, in gold. And uh, actually, investing in gold is the wrong term. It's saving uh, in gold and silver because their money investment is something different. You might want to invest in, uh, in the stock market. But uh, personally, I think the stock market is overvalued. The stock market topped in 2018 uh, in terms of real money when the Dow Gold Ratio uh, rebounded to 22 and a half. That was the highest level since uh, 2011 in the Dow Gold Ratio. Recently, we got down to 13. So uh, there you go. So let's quickly look at where these markets are this morning. It's uh, quite early here. It's 10 past 7 a.m., still very hot. So I'm trying to do these videos a little earlier. So we got spot gold at 18.95. That's down $16. The low, as I said, has been 18.61 and the high 19.31. Silver's at 24.65. That's down 12 cents. Uh, the high's been 26 and the low 23.35. Well, silver looks even stronger. Silver didn't even pull back to the 21 level. That was a very important level. Uh, the Dow futures uh, is up 180 points. And yesterday, uh, it wasn't a very good day for the stock market. Uh, and mostly towards the end because it, the stock market was up most of the day. And it turned very sharply and closed down uh, on the day. So we've got uh, the Dow now up 180, as I said, up two-thirds. S&P is at 33.50, uh, up half a percent. And the NASDAQ 100 future back below 11,000, but it's up 78 this morning or three quarters of a percent. So yesterday was an interesting day as well because bond yields rallied quite strongly. Uh, so bond prices dropped. So we had bond prices dropping. We had the stock market dropping and gold dropping. Uh, interesting. We need to keep an eye on it. Uh, some people think that if bond yields uh, rise, that it will be the end of the gold bull market. I don't think so because the Federal Reserve uh, and Jay Powell uh, has been saying that they're not even thinking about thinking of raising interest rates. 
and uh, they're going to keep interest rates artificially low, even if it rises. And uh, back in the 70s, in the last great bull market in gold, interest rates are actually uh, went into double digits and gold still kept rising. Uh, so the currencies yesterday actually were fairly strong, the pound and the euro versus the dollar. So it wasn't a, a currency thing as far as gold was concerned. Yeah, the dollar was a bit stronger versus the yen. Uh, this morning, though, we're pretty quiet, unchanged the currencies. I won't go through them really right now. Uh, yeah, we're at 134.40 in sterling and 117.30 in the euro. The dollar is a little firmer versus the yen at 106.75. And also recently when I was speaking about uh, breakouts, in the gold price and all-time highs i uh, showed the charts of uh, gold uh, in euros and pounds uh, in pounds we made an all-time high a new all-time high from 2011 last year and i showed how the market actually came back uh, retested that level and even went below it i think in in pounds it was 1200 that we broke we went through that level came back down to 1100 so if you had gotten out at that uh, level if you thought oh <laughs> it's over we're not gonna go to new highs uh it's failed uh well you would have been uh kicking yourself because right now uh we're above 1400 of course we've been almost to 1600 so that's what i'm trying to say uh and, and i said that in that video that we could see the pullback in dollars so that's what we're getting uh the oil price the wti is at 42.17 up 0.8 of a percent and uh to finish off quickly look at the 10-year yield we're at 0.65 so we are unchanged but yesterday it was up about i think uh six or seven basis points and the rest of the curve was up quite a bit as well. The two-year yield is back up to 0.153. Uh, we'd gotten uh, to 0.11 uh, recently. So it has been a sharp move. And we saw yesterday also that purchasing price index or the PPI in the US was higher than expected. So we might be uh, getting the price inflation in the US. The, uh, Federal Reserve, Bank of England, ECB, Japan, they're going to keep increasing uh, their balance sheets. Uh, we looked at M1 and M2 recently. M1 is growing at a rate of, uh, I think, 80% uh, percent annualized since February. Same for M2. Uh, so, yeah, uh, don't get uh, thrown off the bull. Yes, it's tough, but... Uh, and I've been through this kind of price move. And that's why uh, being a, a gold and silver stacker is difficult. <laughs> because psychologically, it's quite hard. You get these kinds of moves. Uh, uh, y you get uh, all the uh, negative press out there from the mainstream media, mainstream economists. So there you go. Uh, hopefully... Uh, you will hold on to your precious metals. Uh, it's not advice, but uh, I'm holding on to mine. This is just a, a blip. When we look back in a year or two, uh, this uh, price move we've seen in the last 24 hours will not even show up in the chart. Pretty much like the 1987 stock market crash uh, when the Dow dropped 22% in one day doesn't even show up anymore. Uh, so... If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.